Imagine a world in which these crops grow 30% faster, where the yield of a field like this is 30 to 40% greater than it is today, for no additional cost or no additional inputs in terms of water or nutrients. Imagine a world where every crop on this planet is producing more nutritional products. And imagine a world where every crop and every field contains plants, crops, which are perfectly suited to their local environmental conditions, whether they be water abundance or overabundance or water scarcity or heat stress, but every single crop is optimized to where it's growing. That world is available to us. You are imagining our future and the not too distant future. I just spent half a day with Professor Rodolf Barangu. He's a distinguished professor at North Carolina State University and his specialty is genomics, food, nutrition and creating all the things I just talked about. It's a real privilege to spend time with him. He's one of the great CRISPR scientists in this world. Those genetic scissors that we use to do gene editing in humans and plants and all forms of life today. He is in fact the scientist who experimentally proved what CRISPR did in nature, which laid the foundations for us being able to use it as a tool in humans and in our own products. And he taught me a few things. And he really pointed out just how big that opportunity is in front of us. And one of the ways he did that was to remind me of just how much biomass there is on this planet and what it consists of. There are 550 gigatons of carbon in all the biomass on this planet. So you sort of get this starting point. 80% of that is basically trees and plants and all that sort of stuff. We start funneling down bacteria and viruses and put all those aside and we get down to animals. Animals are less than one half of one percent. Humans are a tiny fraction of that. In fact, we as a species are one ten thousandth the biomass on this wonderful planet of ours. And yet, today, almost all the work being done with gene editing is on us. It's on health therapies. And as important as they are, there's this vast opportunity to do better here with gene editing. Only 5% of the CRISPR scientists today are working on everything else other than humans. So that uh, enormous preponderance of biomass on this planet. And yet that is the opportunity. Because if you imagine that world I just talked about, and we do this much more efficiently, then our land use can go down and we can still feed the planet to peak population we can reforest. Now today we are producing crops with 30, 40% greater yields just through editing photosynthesis and making it more efficient. Because nature's version of photosynthesis isn't the most efficient way available. These are challenging pathways for people. The only obstacle here is acceptance. It's a social obstacle. And I'd encourage everyone watching this to go and get your own data and have a look at the risk factors involved because they're actually extremely low. That's gene editing, and that's one opportunity to improve the productivity of agriculture and completely rewrite the rules around the way we use this planet. There are other pathways. One is in just reducing food waste. 40% of the world's production of food, 40% is wasted. And with a few simple changes, particularly at the consumer end of the spectrum, how much we buy, how we shop, what we consume and what we throw away, simple changes, we could easily halve that as a planet. And we could also feed the world through peak population without chopping down a single extra tree. And a third way we can do it is simply by eating less meat. Here's a lovely statistic. So, about one third of all the Earth's land mass, so not the seas, not the oceans, but all the Earth's 
landmass, including the glacial areas and the deserts, about one third of that is all used for agriculture for us. One third. So it's a huge amount. But the vast majority of that is used to feed livestock. Just by shifting our dietary patterns a little bit away from meat, again, we can feed the world through peak population without chopping down one more tree. So I'm just telling you this to illustrate how big the opportunity is, that there are three different pathways to getting there. They're all open to us. That future is ours, should we want it. And it's very inspiring indeed. And people like uh, Rodolf Barangu and his scientific colleagues in CRISPR and foods are absolutely changing the world and making it a better place.